too long. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. They face jail and violence too, but Allah has seen them through. Hello, hello. Is it coming through? Looking good, okay. <clears throat> Hello everyone, I want to say welcome, welcome today to all of you. Is it happening? <clears throat> welcome to all of you gathered here today. Your presence here <clears throat> is greatly appreciated, in particular by the men who remain imprisoned at Guantanamo, whose cry has been and continues to be, please do not forget us. My name is Mary Ellen Quinn. <clears throat> I serve as co-coordinator of Pax Christi, Maine, the Catholic Peace and Justice Movement. On behalf of all of our co-sponsoring organizations. We thank you for standing in solidarity today, joining in the call to the United States government to close the prison at Guantanamo Bay. January 11th marked the 22nd anniversary of its opening. It is long past due it is time to close the site of the unjust detention, torture, abuse, degradation, and inhumane treatment. Mansour Adolfi, a survivor, released in 2016 after 14 years of being held without charge, states clearly, we owe it to the men still detained in Guantanamo to keep fighting for justice and accountability. In a recent letter to President Biden calling for the prison to be closed, it states there must be a meaningful reckoning with the full scope of damage caused by United States policies in response to 9-11 and throughout the whole, the so-called war on terror. <clears throat> Around our world, it is evident that the war on terror has become a war on humanity. We lament the cruelty, the pain, suffering, the death and destruction that has been and continues to be inflicted what we are witnessing today in Gaza, in Ukraine, and so many other parts of the world is truly a war on humanity, conducted with no regard for human rights, no recognition of non-combatants, no semblance of justice nor accountability, no adherence to international law. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, true peace is not merely the absence of tension, it is the presence of justice. Each of our speakers today have dedicated themselves to building peace, promoting justice, following the way of nonviolence and civil resistance. We look forward to hearing from Frank Panopoulos, a human rights attorney who represents one of the prisoners at Guantanamo. Maureen Kehoe Austinson of Smiling Trees Disarmament Farm. 
Dud Hedrick of Maine Veterans for Peace, Mary Kate Small, Witness Against Torture and Pox Christi, Maine, Josh Capilla, Program Director of the Peace and Justice Center of Eastern Maine. Following these speakers, there'll be an opportunity for others to say a few words. Mary Kate will lead us in song throughout our time together, and there'll be a communal prayer to close our gathering. Thank you again for being here today. Um, so my name is Frank Panopoulos. Uh, I represent one of the prisoners at Guantanamo. I, I represent them as their attorney. And uh, I, was talking to, uh, uh, I was talking to my client. His name is Abdul Malik. Uh, he's from Kenya. And I told him a, a couple of weeks ago we were speaking, and I told him that we'd be having uh, this demonstration here in Augusta and in coordination with uh, similar demonstrations around the world that were held that were held earlier this week, and he he asked me to say to everyone, thank you very much, um, and, and peace to everyone. It means a lot to the prisoners there, the 30 prisoners still held at Guantanamo, and he tells the other prisoners, and uh, this helps them get through the day and through the years there, that they know that they're not forgotten that they know that people out here care about them and are willing to come out <coughs> and to demonstrate for their release and in support of them. Um, uh, and so, uh, other than that, uh, I'd like to remember Dr. King, like Mary Ellen said. You know, Dr. King um, said once that a, a country that spends year after year more and more money on the, on the military is bound uh, and headed for moral bankruptcy. And it's so true today. Our defense budget is $886 billion, the highest it's ever been. And it's for wars. It's for supplying weapons to continue a war in Ukraine, supplying weapons for Israel to bomb Gaza, supplying weapons and, and, and other activities around the world. Um, and of that budget, it's, it's small, but for Guantanamo, the budget for the prison is $450 million a year. And that's $450 million spent on a prison that could be better spent on, on having better international relations and on doing other things to uh, prevent, quote, terrorism uh, than just kidnapping and torturing and sending people to black sites and secret prisons. Uh, so. The prisoners at Guantanamo, thank you, uh, and thanks again for coming out here. And uh, D I think Dud Hendrick of the uh, Veterans for Peace is next. Good afternoon. Well, here we are. We're here again. We must be here. What brought us here, what demanded that we were here last year and the year before, and really for over three decades now, essentially remains unchanged. The enormity of the crime of Guantanamo has made our presence an imperative for those of us who try to cling to our humanity. Not easy for us citizens of what I've character, what I characterize as the scourge of the planet. Three decades of the nightmare known as Guantanamo has made our presence, our activism, an imperative. The criminality is of such magnitude. How could it be that it continues? Yes, there are fewer poor souls in Guantanamo, but still the nightmare does continue. Imagine if you were one of the 30 remaining. It's difficult to get one's head around 23 years. Consider who and where you were 23 years ago and what you've done since. What it would be like to have given up those 23 years. Basically total deprivation. Not to have been with family and friends 
for all that time. No moms, no dads, no children. Thinking of the deprivation helps me get a sense of the enormity of the crime. Then there is the torture. Imagine this, detainees are only called by their number. Even their names have been taken from them. That sort of epitomizes the denial of their humanity and the depravity of the people who have imposed it. Nearly 800 exclusively Muslim men and boys have been held since 9-11. And now after years of worldwide condemnation, 30 remain, 16 of whom have actually been cleared for release, and some of them for over 20 years ago. Nine died while in custody, seven from suicide. We should note that these humans, these forsaken souls, have been imprisoned at the astronomical cost of $500 million a year. And we should note that Guantanamo stands as a symbol of Islamophobia and torture and impunity. What this country, our country, exceptional America, represents to the world. So here we are again. I was, as many of you were, here last year and the year before that. And perhaps like some of you, I've also been to Guantanamo, standing with Cubans and other Americans protesting the reality of Guantanamo and their country. We stand again today with Frank Panopoulos, whom you have just heard from, who has for years been representing pro bono one of the poor souls in Guantanamo. It is well that we think of Frank. He has walked the walk. We have his example to live by. We must all up the ante. There is absolutely no acceptable rationale in defense of the ongoing horror, the nightmare of Guantanamo. We must demand that Biden shut Guantanamo down and we ought to be vacating Cuba altogether. We are not wanted there and there is absolutely no defense for perpetuating this symbol of evil, <clears throat> a symbol of America to much of the world. How else would we characterize it? Thank you. I've gathered with the group Witness Against Torture in Washington, D.C. over the years, and a group of uh, singers and writers known as the Peace Poets from the Bronx taught, created and taught us this song. I'll sing it for you, and your part is Let Them Go Home. You'll know when it comes. I hear a beautiful sound. It is the breaking of chains. I see a path full of hope. We have found a way. Let them go home. Let them go home. Let them go home. Let them go home today. One more time now. We, we hear a beautiful sound. It is the breaking of chains. We see a path full of hope. We have found a way. Let them go home. Let them go home. Let them go home. Let them go home today. Maureen from the Smiling Trees Disarmament Farm is here. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Kate. Um, I am uh, Maureen Kehoe Austinson, and my husband and I uh, are the, uh, we live at the Smiling Trees Disarmament Farm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read a poem today written by, uh, written when he was in captivity at Guantanamo uh, by Abdullah Aziz. Uh, he has since been released, 
but uh, if you can believe it, he was able to write this poem while he was in Guantanamo. The name of the poem is, I Shall Not Complain. I shall not complain to anyone or expect grace from anyone other than God, so help me God. Oh Lord, my heart is plagued with troubles. <clears throat> I shall not complain to anyone other than you, even if the seas complain of dryness. My spirit is free in the heavens, while my body is overpowered by chains. Praise God who has granted me patience in times of adversity and gratitude in times of gladness. Praise God who placed a garden and an orchard in my bosom so that they will be with me always. Praise God who granted me faith and made, and made me a Muslim. Praise God, Lord of the world. I bring this poem today as a reminder that these are human beings, that these are people with beating hearts, that they have families, they have loved ones, as are all the people in the sites of U.S. militarism all around the world. Thank you. All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Kalpala, use they, them pronouns, and I'm the program director of the Peace and Justice Center of Eastern Maine. Um, I'm here thinking today, uh, this detainment camp, this uh, moral outrage, uh, has been around for nearly two thirds of my life. And that this uh, ongoing destruction of human rights is part of a uh, U.S. war machine and a system of extraordinary renditions and black sites and secret courts. And not only is that uh, producing these atrocities of indefinite detention and perpetual conflict, but also propping up a U.S. war machine uh, which hollows out the, the treasury and the purpose of this government leaving 140 million Americans in poverty and low wealth and impoverishing 436,000 people here in Maine, all while sowing animosity across the globe. We can no longer stand by and allow these human rights abuses to occur and to uh, those in power who have uh, remained unaccountable. Um, so I'd like to share uh, a poem that I wrote in, in my early 20s, just a few years after this prison uh, opened up. Secretaries resigning in the final throes of who knows how much this controversy can oppose. The quid pro quo and the generally selective prose that is sniffed into the nose of all these garden variety Joes who in snazzy suits segue sharply with wit to brief vague stories of sensory deprivation, electrocution, the basic starvation and dilution of human rights to the hordes of a accused, claiming Geneva's too far away for its conventions to be used. So we mused and the military got their commission and we gave our permission to a president and his committees to decide who's a threat to the state, obvious reference to McCarthy aside, but wait, who's torture chambers? Whose torture chambers, when discovered, made nationwide news at eight? The ex-leader of the nation whose population we've daily decimate. I'm hearing echoes of internment, concentration, totalitarian nation. In prison camps, inmates represent nothing more than a handcuffed enemy whose body is ours to destroy and deface national security as a national disgrace. How many steps is Ethiopia from Stalin, Siberia, Guantanamo from Dachau? I need to ask you all how we can allow and power a man who vehemently vows to use presidential authority 
to permit outright violence to those silenced by the torture. And those taught of abject human cruelty in isolated cells lectured brutally, mutually responsible we are to let this monster grow. The executive branch is a hickory switch that will hit with repeated blows until rows of superficially accused are removed of their rights now have the right to be abused. And at the butt of a gun and at the end of that electrode we'll see every bruise is a bruise on humanity. And as that hood is pulled over your eyes, the same darkness covers the skies in this eclipse of morality. Thank you. We have an opportunity for other people who might want to share a few words. Please come right up to the mic. Hold it, but get close, get close to it. Uh, thank you, can you hear me okay? I'm Tom Whitney from Norway, South Paris area, and I want to speak up for, to back up what Dud Hendricks said about Guantanamo base, that it's the property of Cuba. And that, I want to remind this group, which is about the prisoners, this is kind of a footnote, that the, the prisoners and the base at Guantanamo is about U.S. control of Cuba, ownership and control of Cuba, uh, going uh, seeking that back to the 19th century. This is a continuing phenomenon. I just want to re remind you of, of that, uh, that these struggles are connected and I'm speaking on behalf of an active Cuba solidarity movement in the state of Maine and uh, that has been fighting the economic blockade against Cuba for many years. Thank you. I want to say that um, there have been many vigils going on for Guantanamo this week in Ohio, California, New York, uh, all over the place and so sometimes we do these things and we feel maybe we're the only ones doing it just want to remind you of the solidarity around the country and around the world uh, for shutting this place down Hi I'm Don Kimball BFP chapter one member Josh inspired me to read a recite a poem that I wrote back in the first Infantata, 2017. But I think the words are still true today, unfortunately. People of Israel, what have you become? Mother, daughter, father, son. Has your heart turned as cold as an Auschwitz winter? Have you become another Adolf Hitler? An eye for an eye, you say, will settle the score, but must your children only ever know war. Yes, you've worked hard to be free, but must the price for this freedom be your endless tyranny? People of Israel, stop this madness and find the courage for a permanent ceasefire. Because it is written, he who saves one life saves the world entire. Shalom. Then I'd also like to give a shout out and thanks to my very good friend, Scott Beal, uh, Scott, who I've known since the first day of college. Scott is the one who made the uh, speaker work. When we got it, it couldn't work. And he used all of his electrical engineering skills to get it going. So thank you very much, Scott, for uh, getting it going. And while we're shouting out, uh, Frank prepared these poster uh, leaflets that I've been trying to give to passers-by. They've got little postcards attached. Uh, it's a program that Amnesty International is doing right now on behalf of one of the detainees, one of the prisoners. And so there's one for all of you before you go. Also, I believe we have uh, photographs and the number of days the men have been uh, in the prison. And there's a international 
program uh, trying to keep track of people who vigil. And so if you would be willing to take a picture of yourself at this vigil uh, or have others take the picture for you, that would be great. And Frank is getting those out of his bag. So if you're up for that before you leave, I'll show you what one of them looks like here showing the number of days as of January 11th, I think, that the prisoners have been in prison. So anybody want to take one? Hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to um, do a closing prayer. Uh, Maureen and I will read it. Thank you. Do you want to be voice number one? Okay. This is a prayer for the close of Guantanamo. God of all creation, be with us this day and every day. Encourage us, your people, to seek justice and peace as we live with one, one with another across the globe. Help us to honor the dignity and worth of every person, treating every person as your unique creation. Oh God, empower leadership that seeks to embody our highest ideals. We pray for the courage as individuals and as a nation to do what is right even when we experience fear and uncertainty. We pray for those who have been tortured and indefinitely detained at the detention center at Guantanamo Bay. We pray for the family members of those tortured, those who died in detention, and those held in indefinite detention. We pray for those working at Guantanamo today. We pray for the wisdom for our leaders. We pray for the spiritual healing that the nation can experience from closing Guantanamo and putting an end to this dark and errant chapter in our nation's history. We pray for an end to the division that perpetuates othering our fellow human beings, an end to racism, an end to xenophobia, an end to religious bigotry, and an end to any and all destructive divisions. O oh God of grace and peace, may your light shine ever brighter in each and every person. Together we say, Amen. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Yeah. Really good turn up. Yeah. Go singer, go singer, girl. Um, this song is by Eric Bogle and it just repeats, so here we go. Courage, Muslim brothers, you do not walk alone. We will walk with you and sing your spirits home. Courage, Muslim brothers, you do not walk alone. We will walk with you. We will walk with you and sing your spirits home one more time now courage muslim brothers you do not walk alone we will walk with you and sing your spirits home